Good day grade 10s, in this lesson we're going to be looking at how to solve literal equations or as you may call it changing the subject of the formula. So all that we're going to be doing is looking how to rearrange these to make the one that is the subject, in other words the one that the one that's the subject is the one that's on the one side of the equal sign by itself and the others are if, all by themselves again. So let's look at an example so we can practice this. The best way to get these right is to practice, practice, practice. And you're just really using your basic rules of algebra. So we've got V is equal to U plus AT and they want A to be the subject of the formula. What does that mean? That means they want A by itself. So first of all what we're going to do is isolate the term that's got the A in it. So by doing what we need to do then is we need to now use, we now need to move the U over to the V side. So you can see it's a plus here. When we take it across the equal sign it becomes V minus U is equal to AT. Now again, we want the A by itself. So in order to get the A by itself, we want to divide both. We have to divide this side by T to get rid of the T. But what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. And then these T's cancel. And therefore, you've got V minus U over T equals A. And A is now the subject of the formula. Let's try a little bit more complicated version of this. This time we've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And again we want A by itself. Now this looks scary, but it's not scary. We're just going to take it in nice little baby steps. And once you go through them in baby steps, you will understand that it's actually quite easy to do. So first things first, what do we want to do? We want to get the term that's got the A all by itself. So to do that, we need to move this term over to that side of the equal sign. So we go S minus UT is equal to a half AT squared. Right, now we need to start isolating your A. Okay, we need to start isolating your A. So what we're going to do is we've got a half here, but that half could actually be written as, we could rewrite this as S minus UT is equal to a t squared over 2 because that's what a half means, it means half of that. So what can we do to get rid of the half? What we can do is we can multiply both sides by 2. Right, so if we do that we end up with 2s minus 2ut is equal to a t squared why? Because these cancel. And now we again just want the A by itself. So what do we do? We divide both sides by T squared. I'm sorry about the little squiggly nine. I don't know why. Divided by, see it did it again, T squared. Then we cancel that. Okay, so that is your answer. A is equal to 2S minus TUT all over ha, T squared. Okay, so A is equal to 2S minus TUT over T squared. So we've made A the subject of this formula. Right, let's try another example. Okay, I do not want you to panic when you see this. It is easy to panic when you see this horrible pi and a square root and everything else. But again, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate. We're going to do it baby steps, okay? So we want G by itself. So let's rewrite this. First of all, T is equal to 2 pi square root of p over g, p over g. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is get rid of everything that's in front of the square root and we're going to put it to the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 2 pi. Right, so that cancels with that, makes it nice and easy. So now we've got t over 2 pi is equal to the square root of p over g. Now how do we get rid of a square root? To get rid of a square root we need to square both sides. Right, that makes sense. We need to square both sides. So in order to do that, now that we've done that, sorry, we've got, we can either leave it as brackets like that, but I don't like it, I'm going to multiply it out. So it becomes t squared over 2 squared is 4 pi squared 
equals P over G. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we want G. Now there's a little trick that we can use and that is this. We can swap these two if we swap both of those two as well. What we're really doing is cross multiplying both sides. But in mathematics the little shortcut is that we can invert this but we only can invert this if there's only one fraction on this side and we can invert on that side as well. So therefore we can say 4 pi squared over t squared is equal to g over p. Why did we want to do that? Because we want g to be at the top because it's much easier when we're trying to find g as a subject of the formula. And now we need to get rid of p and p is at the bottom, we're dividing by p so we just need to times both sides by p therefore we get g is equal to 4 pi squared p over t squared. And some people I find get a little bit freaked out about the fact that I've swapped sides. I just, it's natural convention to make the subject of the formula be on the left hand side. Um, in the previous slides I left it on the right hand side but that's where it ended up. You can do that as well. I just I'm used to seeing it on the left so that is why I swapped it but you could have left it here and gone g is equal to 4 pi squared p over t squared and that would have been perfectly correct. Just habit. Okay let's look at another example. Again do not panic we are just going to do baby steps. Okay so there we go we've got z is equal to 4 minus the square root of 5 pi x over 2 and we are solving for x, we are solving for x. Okay so this makes it a little bit easier because x is at the top whereas at the last question the g was at the bottom. But we've got this 4 minus but what did we say when we've got more than one term on the side we separate out and we get rid of, we move it to the other side the things that do not have the x in it. So we are going to take this 4 and take it to the other side. So we've got z minus 4 is equal to minus the square root of 5 pi x all over 2. Now I don't like that minus there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it across the other side. So then that becomes when minus, we're basically dividing both sides by minus, z minus 4 is equal to the square root of 5 pi x over 2. So if we rearrange that, that becomes 4 minus z. How did I get that? I went minus times and minus is a plus. So it's plus 4 minus z is equal to the square root of 5 pi x over 2. Now how do we get rid of square roots? What do we do? We square them. So let's square that. Okay. So that becomes 4 minus z squared is equal to 5 pi x over 2. Now there's no reason for you to multiply this out. We're not actually asking you to expand it or anything. We're just asking to find, make x a subject of the formula. So what we're going to do now is do that and we're going to just get rid of us 5 pi and 2, get it to the other side so that x is all by itself. So baby steps, we're dividing by 2 on the left hand side, on the right hand side to get rid of it. What do we need to do? We need to times both sides by 2. So that cancels with that. So now we've got 2, 4 minus z squared is equal to 5 pi x. Then what are we going to do? We're going to divide both of these sides by 5 and pi because we are multiplying by 5 and pi over here. So then this cancels with that. Let's just make it a pi. And what are we left with? We're left with x is equal to 2. 4 minus z squared over 5 pi. So it doesn't matter how scary it looks, you can always solve it just by doing baby steps. And you just need to do a reverse of whatever's happening on this side. If you're subtracting on this side, you add on that side. If you're multiplying on this side, you divide on this side. If you're square rooted, we need to square both sides. 
Right, let's look at something a little bit more complicated. We now need to make R the subject of the formula. So in order to make R the subject of the formula, again, what are we going to do? We're going to get every term that doesn't have an R and we're going to put it on the other side. So let's do that. We're going to go 1 over R is equal to 1 over Q minus, because it's plus here, so it's minus 1 over P. Now remember that trick I showed you where we can invert this. What is the rule? The rule is we can only invert this if this is one term, it's one fraction, and we, then we can invert it. So what we need to do is we need to make this one fraction. So we need to do a common denominator on the right hand side. And the common denominator in this case is QP. How did I get that? Let's pretend this was 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. What would the common denominator be? I'm sure you would say it is 12, but how did you get that? Well, 12 is 3 times 4. And that's really what we're doing there. We're going Q times P is QP. Right, now we do this. Q goes into Q how many times? Once. So we've got 1 times by P minus P goes into P how many times? QP leaves you with a Q. So you've got 1 times by Q. So we have that 1 over R is equal to P minus Q over QP. And now we have a fraction here and we have a fraction here. So therefore we can do the equivalent of cross multiplying where we just invert both of these. So we're going to invert this and we're going to invert this. So we're going to go R is equal to R over 1 is equal to QP over P minus Q. When therefore we know that R is QP over P minus Q. So grade 10, you need to realize that you just need to take baby steps, don't panic, step by step, practice, 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 and then do the assessments at the end of the section. Thank you, grade 10s. Have a lovely day.